Hey, guess what? Bernie Sanders won New Hampshire. He won New Hampshire, and I'm honestly a little bit surprised that I'm able to tell you that he won New Hampshire because I'm still a little bit traumatized after Iowa. Like, I was honestly skeptical that we'd even see the results tonight, but we got the results, and Bernie won. Um, it wasn't by a wide margin. It was relatively close, with Pete Buttigieg coming in a close second. I wanted there to be a little bit of space between him and Pete. Nonetheless, he won, and I'll take it. So as I record this video, we don't have 100% of precincts reporting, but with 85.86 in at the time that I record this video, Bernie Sanders is in first place with 25.92% of the vote. That's 68,545 votes. Pete Buttigieg comes in second place with 24.09%. That's more than 63,000 votes, almost 64,000. And then surprisingly, in third place, Amy Klobuchar has 19.91% of the vote with more than 50,000 votes. Now, interestingly enough, Elizabeth Warren came in a distant fourth place with 9.29%. And Joe Biden came in a devastating fifth place with 8.66%. I mean, Amy Klobuchar doubled what Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden have. So we'll talk about the implications of the results and where everyone stands and how I think that the field will shape up. But let me just tell you this, donate to Bernie Sanders. Pause the video, go donate to Bernie Sanders and then come back and let me know how much you donated do in the comment section. I wanna know and I will go through and try to heart every single comment if you did in fact donate because look, the media is going to deny Bernie Sanders the victory narrative. We saw before any votes came in that MSNBC hosts were basically saying, well, you know, it's not a big deal if Bernie Sanders is able to win because back in 2016, he won by a much larger margin. So now he's getting a lot less of a margin, except that's obviously stupid because that was a two person race. This is a nine person race. So, I mean, <laughs> the fact that we have to explain that, it, it's not that we do have to explain it, it's that these are hacks and they want to deny Bernie Sanders a narrative, and according to the people at MSNBC, in the event Amy Klobuchar came in third, which she did, they wanted to make it seem as if that's the bigger story. So let me share a tweet from New York Times reporter Trip Gabriel. I honestly don't know if he's being serious, I think he is. But this is what he says with regard to the media narrative. Number one story of the night is Amy Klobuchar. Number two story of the night so far is Pete Buttigieg coming closer to Bernie Sanders than expected. So it doesn't matter that Bernie Sanders won. The narrative will not be that Bernie Sanders won. The narrative will be that Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg have momentum. Bernie, not so much. So the reason why it's so important that we donate to Bernie Sanders, because if we can absolutely just drive up his numbers, get him to four, five million possibly, that is going to force the media to realize that he does in fact have momentum. Now that still might not, you know, um, encourage them to cover him. But I remember back in 2016, I can't remember which primary, I think maybe it was after Michigan, we donated like six or seven million to Bernie Sanders after that election and the media did talk about it, right? So I don't necessarily know if we can generate any type of positive press this way, but voters need to know that there's momentum. So we make them pay attention by donating in mass to Bernie Sanders. That's what we have to do because that's that's our only choice. Um, now, on top of that, we had several candidates drop out tonight. We'll get to that in a separate video because I want to take some time talking about that at length. But really, it, it is actually, you know, it's a strong performance for Amy Klobuchar. For her to finish in third place, higher than Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden, yeah. Um, now, the real story here is Elizabeth Warren and Joe Biden. Joe Biden finished in fifth place. That is absolutely brutal, and I don't think he expected a victory here, but he already is in South Carolina. He is skipping Nevada, and he went straight to South Carolina because that is basically the only hope that he has left. If he can win in South Carolina then maybe he'll have a little bit of momentum going into Super Tuesday. But for him to finish in fourth place in Iowa and fifth place in uh, New Hampshire, ouch. Now, for Elizabeth Warren, a lot of individuals, I think, rightfully said this was a must-win state for her because this is a neighboring state. I mean, 
There were times throughout the pro process, I think maybe even in November, that she was in first place by a pretty large margin. And for her to fall to not just fourth place, but a distant fourth, that's pretty brutal. Now, at her speech tonight, she basically gave us an indication that she's not going anywhere. She's not dropping out anytime soon. And she pitched herself as this unity candidate. And at the same time, she attacked Bernie Sanders and kind of attacked his supporters, suggesting that we're attacking other candidates and whatnot. Um, so I, I, I don't know what she's doing. Um, it's, it's honestly shocking that she did this poorly and that Amy Klobuchar was able to best her. And if she truly believed in, you know, uniting to take on a moderate and get progressive change, you know, now's the time that if I'm Elizabeth Warren and I care more about policy than my own political career, I would consider dropping out. Now, this is totally her decision, right? I'm not going to be ruthless and say, drop out now, hack. Um, but I mean, back in, what was it, October, a lot of Elizabeth Warren supporters were basically saying around the time Bernie Sanders had his heart attack that maybe he should consider dropping out and supporting Elizabeth Warren if you truly want a progressive to win. So now, you know, the shoe's on the other foot, and I'm asking you respectfully to consider, if you are an Elizabeth Warren supporter, do you truly care about progressive policy change? If you genuinely care about that, then now is the time to back the progressive candidate with the momentum. And that is Bernie Sanders. Elizabeth Warren did not have a strong showing in a state that theoretically she should have done really good in. Like if she came in um, third place, probably wouldn't have been great ideally for her. Second place would have been good for her. But I mean, fourth place. <sighs> Man, that's that's brutal. But overall, Bernie Sanders is the winner. And my goal was for him to win by about five points. But, you know, um, last week we saw some polls that showed Pete Buttigieg had some real momentum because of that media bump that they gave him after the Iowa debacle. But after that debate, even though I thought that Amy Klobuchar didn't perform very well because she said the same thing that she always said, um, she did eat into Buttigieg's lead. So we kind of have Amy Klobuchar to thank for, you know, uh, pulling back Pete Buttigieg a little bit. Um, and Bernie Sanders at his uh, victory speech tonight, he said rightfully so, he won Iowa because he got the most votes. So this is a victory. Take this victory, but let's make sure that we do what we can to um, donate to Bernie Sanders, even if you just have a dollar. Make sure that the media has to pay attention to at least the amount of people that donated to him. Even if they don't, let's, let's give it a try. But we're on to Nevada. That's not this Saturday, but next Saturday. And I think we have a good shot, but we have to work very, very hard. You know, Amy Klobuchar and Pete Buttigieg, they're going to have a little bit more of a difficult time in Nevada because that is the uh, first state that isn't super, super white. So they're going to really have to perform if they want to, you know, keep up with this momentum. So we have to put in a lot of time. If you are able to get out to Nevada to canvas for Bernie Sanders. Take the My Bernie journey. Now is the time to do that. Now is the time to make some calls for Bernie Sanders because if we can win the first three primary states, that is phenomenal. I, I was about to say, you know, imagine the media narrative, but we're going to be denied a media narrative. The only instance where the media is going to say, wow, Bernie's going to win is when he emerges as the presumptive nominee if on Super Tuesday he really is able to sweep and they're just basically crying on MSNBC. Um, and for anyone who tuned in to MSNBC and CNN tonight, the commentary was just bizarre. So I may do a separate video tomorrow just talking about their just absurdity because I think they're kind of losing their minds and they're salty at the fact that Bernie isn't going anywhere. And you see people like Joy Reid uh, supporting an individual like Bloomberg when today we found out that he made very, very racist remarks because he's racist. So, I mean, this this primary is getting very interesting, albeit stressful. You know, I kind of watched as the numbers came in, and I had a little calculator, and I kept calculating the distance between Bernie Sanders and Pete Buttigieg. Not the healthiest thing in hindsight to do mentally, because I really overworked myself into a frenzy every time new numbers came in. Um, so, <laughs> just know that we have momentum regardless if the media recognizes that or not. And, you know, we're a strong movement and we have a solid chance of taking this entire thing. So good job to everyone. Thank you to all of the volunteers who spent time 
in the freezing cold to canvas for Bernie in New Hampshire. You are the backbone of this movement. Thank you to everyone who, you know, fought past their social anxiety to make calls for Bernie Sanders. And thank you to everyone who's working a nine to five job and still chipped in a dollar when you can't even afford that. You all are amazing. And if you couldn't do that, then just sharing a story about Bernie Sanders, sharing, getting the word out, convincing one friend or family member, you're all part of this movement. This was a collective effort and we pulled it off. Wasn't by, you know, a large margin that I wanted. I wanted a blowout. Nonetheless, this is a victory and I'm going to take it.